Amy Bo is a hormonal and training coach and the founder of the Warrior School for Women. The Warrior School is the first of its kind to bring training and the menstrual cycle together. I was recently introduced to Amy as I was looking for a fitness coach to help me reach some of my own personal training goals and was super intrigued by her methods of incorporating both fitness and the cycle to maximize our goals. So I thought it would be super interesting to get her on here to explain the science of our cycle and the impact our cycle has on meeting fitness goals. Welcome, Amy. So we've talked last segment about understanding the science of our cycle. And now we're going to talk a little bit about um, understanding our cycle. Yeah, so and- in our last video, we spoke about like the science of the cycle. And we said that, you know, my cycle is different to yours. Yours is different to mine. And, you know, we really need to understand our own cycles and what's going on in our own bodies. Because we can have like the science and the information But, you know, our cycle and what's going on in our body body might not be the same. And so we need to look at how do we understand our cycle? How do we know our cycle? Because I believe that you need to know that and understand it before we can implement strategies uh, and tools to support our cycle. So how do we know our cycle? Well, we start by tracking it. We need to track our cycle. We need to pay attention to it. I often get asked, what's the best way to track it? So when I started tracking my cycle, it was about five years ago. And I just started by writing the day of my cycle at the top of my training journal. I didn't have an app. I didn't, I just wrote the day, how I was feeling, you know, maybe my sleep, uh, any symptoms I had. And that was next to my training. And over time, I just began to see patterns, you know, patterns in terms of how I felt, what day I was on, and then how my training went. And so it could be as simple as writing it down in your journal or in a notebook, just write down what day you're on, or even in the calendar of your phone, Mm -hmm. just start to understand actually, where are you in the cycle? What day are you on? Which brings us to the next piece of We need to know the length of our cycle. And we'll talk about this when it comes to our training. But the length of our cycle is really important because then we know what's happening to our hormones. We know where we're at in our cycle. You know, if I have a 21-day cycle, I'm going to cycle very differently to someone who has a 35-day cycle. Someone who has a 35-day cycle, their follicular phase, the first phase, tends to be the one that shortens and lengthens. The luteal phase doesn't change that much. It's always around 12 to 14 days. Now, if I have a 35-day cycle, that follicular phase is really long. So, you know, I have a a long time being in this first phase. Mm -hmm. If I have a 21-day cycle, I have a much shorter time being in this first phase, which means I'm if I ovulate, I'm going to ovulate much sooner and then I'm going to get into that second phase a lot sooner. And so this is important if we're thinking about fertility, if we're thinking about training and and putting in strategies for performance, Mm -hmm. we need to know where we are. We need to know what's happening. Uh, And so the tracking, we track the length. We want to know day one is the first day of our heaviest bleed. It's not the day when we might spot a little bit and and the color's a little off. It's the first day of like bright red blood. So then we want to track from there until we come back around, until we bleed again. So day one to day one, how long is it? What else can we track? Well, we can track loads of things. There's so many apps out there, like you said, that actually have all the data points in them. They've created them to go through like uh, energy, sleep, digestion, bowels. uh, You know, we could even track temp, pulse. Um, We can track uh, the how much blood uh, we have, any PMS symptoms. So there's so many data points. And what I say is the more data you can collect, Mm. the better you're going to understand your cycle. And I say it takes probably around a good three, four, five cycles to start to actually understand some patterns that you're seeing uh, in your cycle. So how long is it? Uh, And then how long are you bleeding for? Uh, Are you bleeding like the right amount, volume of blood? 
Are you getting a temperature change? So our temperature, our core body temperature is a little lower in that first phase and it should rise a little bit in that second phase. And that indicates that we've ovulated. So we can look for some key signs for ovulation, which is the temperature rise, the change in uh, cervical mucus, uh, the actual change in the position of like the cervix. So there's things that we can definitely look at to say, have I ovulated? Right. And then we can uh, track our data points for PMS. So what kind of PMS are you getting? Are you getting headaches or migraines? Are you getting uh, um, like anxious? You know, are you having mood changes or is there a lot of anxiety? Uh, Are you getting cravings? Is your sleep poor in the second phase of your cycle? All of these things we we want to know. I mean, like you said, there's tons of great apps to track, uh, get in the habit. If you forget a month, it's okay. Kind of go back and try to remember and and make notes as you go. Um, One thing I have noticed is since I've gotten my cycle healthier is once that full moon comes, I know what's coming. (laughs) I've managed to get myself into the full moon cycle, which I know is, you know, from our our ancestors was the way it happened for for everybody. Um, Yes, I love that you bring that up. Because it's not talked about a lot because they'll give you a range from like a regular cycle is like 21 to 35. But actually, the closer you can get to 28 or 29 to that moon cycle, it means the body's functioning like really well, like optimally. So I would love that you bring it up. Often we have this really hard time like listening to our body and we're not sure what we're listening for. After, you know, three, four months, you should see some patterns. And now we can do things with those patterns. We can start to understand. You can start to understand your body better. And then from that, you can put in some strategies that are definitely going to support you uh, in each phase of your cycle. So a lot of the time we really struggle in that second phase of our cycle, you know, maybe the, the seven to 10 days before we actually bleed again, when progesterone's higher. When progesterone is higher, it, that's, it rises our core body temperature. So sleep can become a bit of an issue for a lot of females. Our core body temperature is higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we get hotter. What also happens is that melatonin, our sleep hormone, rises and is higher in that second phase as well. So we actually crave more rest than the first phase of our cycle. Uh, progesterone makes it a little harder for us to like push, which we'll talk about in our training and recover. And so if we know these things, uh, we can start to put in strategies around like our sleep, our rest, our recovery, our food. So with the food, like eating a lot of food that creates a lot of inflammation in the second phase of the cycle is not really supportive because the body already has higher levels of inflammation in that second phase of the cycle. So we can start to be a bit more mindful around our food and put strategies in place uh, to make sure that we're nourishing our body in a way that's really going to support where our hormones are in that second phase. So that's a great point. What types of food should we be, obviously anti-inflammatory foods, but is there any one thing or a couple of things in particular we should, I know fiber is a really important one, but what, um, what, what do you recommend we really focus on getting during that second phase of our cycle? Yeah, there, there's a couple of like layers to it. If we're in a body that's really, really stressed, uh, you know, we will have higher symptoms and we'll be more inflamed. And so we really need to come back to looking at what's really creating the stress because it, it can be really hard to balance that out with certain foods if the body's just in complete stress. So look at that first. Okay. And then... Uh, if you know you're pretty familiar with your umbrella and you're pretty good at managing your stress, but you do notice that maybe your energy is lower in that second phase, or you feel more inflamed, or you have some more symptoms, uh, what we want to do is we want to choose like whole foods, so quality proteins. Uh, we call it like roots and fruits, so like root vegetables, some fruits, uh, and some good quality fats. We want to make sure that we eat frequently and balance our meals. That's like the simplest thing. If we can actually eat those balanced macronutrients in a meal, eat them frequently, uh, that's going to be really powerful for our blood sugar, for our stability. Now, there are some foods that can create more inflammation if we're already in a stressed 
an inflamed body. And so those things are like alcohol, uh, a lot of wheat or gluten, a lot of dairy. Now, I'm not saying these things. I eat all of these things. Yeah. And even in the in the second stage of my cycle, but my foundation is very good. My body's not stressed. So I'm not in inflam. I don't have any inflammation. So I can tolerate some of these inflammatory foods. Whereas if someone is in a really inflamed state, eating a lot of uh, dairy or wheat, um, a lot of seed oils or uh, drinking a lot of alcohol is going to make it a little harder in that second yeah. phase. So I, we can I watch. Imagine sugar yeah. would probably be up on that list as well. <laughs> yeah. How, how do we know if we're in an inflamed state? What What are we looking for? Yeah. So if we think about the cycle, we're probably going to be experiencing quite a a painful cycle, quite a big PMS profile. So that's the big thing I'd be looking at is the PMS and how many symptoms you have. Uh, We can also look at it in terms of recovery. So from our training, we could look at if I'm not recovering well, so my sleep is poor, my temp and my pulses are really low. That's telling me that I'm inflamed and I'm actually not, the body's not recovering well enough. Taking temp and pulse every morning can tell us if the body has recovered. Uh, We should be at these certain points with our temp and pulse. And if they're low, it's telling us that the body is stressed. And when the body is stressed, that's when we have more inflammation. We call them markers, basically. So we're looking at sleep, uh, temp and pulse, cycle, bowel movements, uh, energy over the day, appetite, uh, sex drive, like we're looking for all of these things. And if we can't tick them off, we know the body's in a stress state. Therefore, we know that our chance of being inflamed is going to be higher. Okay. <laughs> so I just invite you to just start tracking, just track the day of the cycle, um, use an app and then just see after three or four months if you notice any patterns. And then if you do, just start to get curious about what might be causing those patterns, uh, good or bad. You know, maybe you have a terrible cycle or two and then maybe you have a couple of really good cycles. We have to remember that it does take the uh, follicle 100 days to actually get to the cycle. So the cycle we experienced this month is 100 days in the making. So that's why we need to track for quite a while uh, because it's, you know, we're, we're already like, you know, 100 days in when we, we have this cycle. Uh, and then, yeah, just start to think about what strategies might support me better in my cycle. Oh, and that's so interesting. I love, I, I didn't realize it was 100 days in the making. That's super interesting. <laughs> so yeah, if you're, if you're only 30 days into changing your lifestyle, then it's going to take time before that catches up and you actually reap the, the rewards. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And it's really important to know because some females will make some changes and then they'll get really frustrated because they'll have the next two or three cycles that still aren't that great. But you need to know that it's like a hundred days in the making that you've got this in the body. And so we need to, this is, again, we need to stick it out. We need to think more in terms of like years, you know, not weeks or months um, and in our training and our health and in our cycle health. Wow. Okay. Well, I love it. I love it. Thank you for that. And uh, the next segment we'll talk about is going to be how to incorporate our fitness training with our cycle. So I look forward to that. 